What's good, y'all? We are back with a new landing of Avengers on Planet Rail. Let's get into it. So we start here in the Avengers headquarters, the Impossible City, and we got a little flashback here. This was before the Avengers fell asleep and woke up in Nightmare's domain, and Carol is talking to the Impossible City, and she says she's always wanted an orbital super fortress, and the city says that they are happy for Carol. And since the city is happy, Carol is happy as well. Then she asks the city like, are you sure you're not upset that we sent T'Challa to delete you? And the city says no and tells Carol that they were going to end up doing it themselves. And it was the Avengers that helped the impossible city make the decision to spare other worlds of the Ashen Combine. But it was T'Challa and Sam that gave the impossible city the will to keep living. And the city calls them extraordinary men and Carol agrees and that's why she gave T'Challa that job because she knew he can complete a hard task. And she sent Sam as well because she knew that he would do the right thing. And the city calls that an interesting balance that we see Carol yawning and she just falls to sleep. Then we see Tony sleep on the ground too. And the city like, yo, Vision, something is wrong. Now Vision peeps what's going on and he realizes that they are under attack, but he doesn't know by who. Now we jump to the present and we see the Avengers are about to go toe to toe with the Twilight Court. So the first fight we see is between Captain America and Lancelot. And she talking crazy like, bro, you only brought a shield, no sword? And she says to Arthur, the Twilight Court's king, that the Avengers are crazy. Then Sam throws his shield, making it go past Lancelot, and it hits Bedivere in the face. Bouncing off his face makes it hit Lancelot in the back. Then he catches the shield and he says, with a shield like this, who needs a sword? Let that nigga know! Now we move on to the second battle, and we got Galahad, and you know she's already up against Thor. And she asks where Thor is because she has no appetite for a mortal fight. And Thor stands ten toes. He like, I'm right here. Here is a god. Not some thin-blooded creation of gene sorcery. And Thor like, bruh, look at you. You ain't even got a hammer. Galahad says, worry not, because she does have a hammer. And when I seen this, I was like, oh. And for those who do know about that hammer, bruh, that came from fear itself when Hulk picked up this hammer. I don't know how she got it, but hey, she got it. Now we jump to the third fight. And we got T'Challa and Parseval. And T'Challa attacks on sight, but Parseval dodges. And T'Challa like, how did you do that? Then Parseval tells him that it was his gift. If his cause is just, he cannot be defeated. Now Parseval is delighted to fight against T'Challa and he wants this fight to be remembered. Now let's head over to Scarlet Witch and her magical battle with King Arthur. So at first reading this, you thought she was about to fight Mordred cause they got some unfinished business to take care of. But Arthur cuts her off like, nah, you finna fight me. And he tells Wanda that Mordred was just following his orders. Then he tells her, if you wanna blame anybody, blame me cause he is the Twilight Court's king. And Wanda like, a king? What is a crown of a king in the face of the living dark hole? Then Arthur tells her nothing and that he wears no crown, but only the armor of Cthon. Now they finna get to work. Then we jump over to a tech savvy battle with Iron Man and Bedivere. Now Bedivere tells Tony that he can drop his cloaking on his suit. And he says his cloaking is very impressive, but so are the sensors on his suit. Now Tony says that he's supposed to be angry at Bedivere and the rest of the Twilight Court but he loves Bedivere's suit. And Bedivere, ready to attack, tells him that he's proud of it. And he tells Tony that he should be proud of his suit as well. And Tony like, bruh, between you and me, I really am proud of it. And he says that he would love to compare notes with Bedivere about their suits. Then Bedivere says he would love to as well because he likes Tony's cloaking. Now things get serious. Tony asks Bedivere, could you ask your side to stop fighting? And Bedivere says, nah, could you? And Tony like, nah, not a chance. Then they start fighting, and Bedivere says it's a disappointment. Then Tony tells him that life is full of disappointments. Now let's turn the page to another battle. We got Mordred and Vision up against each other, and she blocks an attack from Vision with one of her tarot cards. Now she says that she should have seen this coming, and she should have seen this coming because it is her gift to see how things come apart. Now Vision blitzes her, breaking her shield and causing it to crumble. Now the way Vision is talking to her, he's ready to put an end to her. He says, Mordred, surrender or don't. I don't care which one you do. Then Mordred says, as I said, Vision, I see how things come apart and you are made of many parts. Now let's fly over to Captain Marvel and Bursalak. 
and off rip we see Captain Marvel send a blast towards Berserk, but he deflects it. Now Kara says that it's a relief that she gets the one out of the Twilight Court that doesn't run their mouth. Then she sends another blast at Berserk, but he dodges it. And I know Carol's salty because she starts to fly over to Berserk, and she like stands still, and she about to try to steal on him. Now we cut back to Captain America and Lancelot. And Lancelot is trying to make Sam stand still, just like how Carol is trying to make Berserk stand still. Both sides have that problem right now. And Sam like, yo, Lancelot, keep up. Let me show you why they used to call me Falcon. Now I ain't gonna lie, bruh. Everybody been spitting bars. Then we see Thor striking Galahad, but she blocks it with her hammer. And Thor asks her, how do you have that hammer? Then we see Tony and Bedivere fighting with blades, and they are both entertained fighting each other. Now let's get back to Black Panther and Parseval. And Parseval tells T'Challa like, bro, I really got great admiration for you. Because knowing you can't even win, you still don't give up. Then T'Challa catches one of Parseval's punches. And he calls out to the Avengers and he tells him, somebody switch fights with me. Now we get back to Wanda and King Arthur and she got him tied up with some spells. Then Arthur says that Wanda's magic is like a feast. And he tells her that the armor of Cthon knows its own. And the armor does know Wanda because Wanda and Cthon have heavy ties together. Now Vision just destroys Mordred's shield. And he says to her, bro, I'm implacable. You're flesh. And it doesn't matter if you're Gene Rot or not. You will tire before me. Then Mordred says that she should do something about that. Then she calls on Bursalak. Then we see him deflect Carol's blast and it hits Vision. Then we cut back to Tony and Bedivere. And we see Cap and Lancelot in the back too. But Iron Man tells the Avengers that they need to shake it up. And he says that everybody is too evenly matched. Then T'Challa hears that and he's like, bro, I've been saying that. Then he gets stolen by Parseval. Then Carol leaves Bursalak and she says that she's convinced. Then she goes to Lancelot and steals on her. And Carol says, it's now musical chairs. Then we see Tony get up through and he takes better for your sword. And we see T'Challa leave too. And that makes Parseval mad. He like, nah, bro, you can't be retreating. Then Tony swoops in and he like, bro, I hear you can only win a fight if it's fair. Then we see him jump out his suit at Parseval and he says, I don't consider this to be a fair fight. That boy Tony finna throw hands. Then we see T'Challa slash Bedivere and he says, this ain't a fair fight either. Taste Antarctic vibranium. Now we see Vision is leaving Mordred. Then we see Thor come in and just slam Mjolnir on the ground. And you can tell Mordred is in a lot of pain. And now we see Sam is face to face with Bursalite. He like Noah can touch you, huh? And because of that, he won't even try. And Sam is like, this is the thing when you only got a shield. You wait for the other person to attack because you can dodge it and then you put him down. Then Bursalite just looks at him and it looked like he giving a little grin like, yeah, buddy, you got to throw hands now. Now we back to where Galahad is and she's pissed because she want to fight Thor. And she swings at Wanda and Wanda tells her, well, too bad, you got the witch. Then Wanda calls her a strange young creature with an ancient hammer. And that hammer contains ancient magic, but Wanda knows magic much older. Now we see Arthur and he says no, but he gets cut off by Vision. And my boy Vision shut down whatever Arthur was doing. And he tells Arthur, what you feeling right now is my hand on your heart. And he tells the Twilight Court to surrender. And if they don't, he will tear King Arthur's heart from his chest. And Vision tells him, do not test me. And I ain't gonna count to you, bro. The way Jet McKay is handling Vision and giving him this demeanor, man. Now Lancelot realizes what's going on and she's in shock. Then Arthur tells the Twilight Court not to yield. He says his life means nothing. Then we see Mordred and Bedivere yield. And Mordred says that Arthur's life is everything. Then Bedivere tells the Avengers that they yield. Now Carol shows up to where Wanda is and she asks her, what was all this for? And Wanda tells her that they were here for Kang. Then she says their leader didn't wait. And she asks, where is Murden, the leader of the Twilight Court? Then we see Murden is in the same room as Kang. And Murden says it's good to see Kang looking well. And perhaps they should do something about that. Now, I don't know what Murden finna do. It probably sound crazy. But hey, man, that was Avengers issue nine. We can talk in the comments. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next landing on Planet Rail. God bless. I'm out.